Welcome to a special edition of the Roundtable. My name is Paul Dingaman and I am on location up in the beautiful, and let me tell you, the beautiful new Blue Water Convention area with the chairman of the St. Clair County Board of Commissioners, Mr. Jeff Bohm. Oh, Jeff, thanks, for, thanks for the invitation. Yeah, getting an opportunity. Um, we've got our uh, formal open house, which is going to be here on April 17th, which is a Friday. And then on April 18th, we are going to be doing the public open house piece of it. I'm going to be here along with a bunch of the other commissioners to show people around to something that was a long time coming. We've actually been talking about this project for about oh, two and a half, three years now, really just getting an opportunity to put all the pieces of the puzzle together between the hotel, the county, Baker College with their culinary school, and uh, you know they're doing their next expansion right now. So it's pretty exciting times, really. We used to had a, a roundtable about three years ago with Connie Harrison and and Bill Kaufman and uh, two or three other people from from the county and also from the developer uh, talking about the plans that this might happen and my golly it did yeah it was really you know um, ironic we have a big blue meets green which is a regional planning group that we plan a lot of different projects and a lot of one of the things came was a convention center project located in the area we started in uh, talks early with a developer john wheeler from grand rapids right. who's been involved in multiple hotel projects and we brought it up at one of our blue meets uh, green uh, meetings and uh, connie harrison the president of baker at the time tapped us on the shoulder and said i'd like to have a meeting with you guys well ironically uh, baker college had been looking for quite some time in a two to three year period to look to put their a culinary school and you know unbeknownst to me I wasn't aware that they were actually right. looking so we really got all the players uh, to sit down at the table Baker at the time was really the most ready to go we were really in the early stages of the development of the whole thing and um, when we finally got all the pieces of the puzzle together uh, everybody moved on their end the hotel was complete at first along with a the restaurant then Baker then we started the construction of the facility and and we're just coming right down to the wire here now on it. Uh, during the process, uh, there's always uh, pros and cons. There was controversy, there was positives, but you got through all of that. Yeah, it's like anything, um, you know, when you roll out a project of this magnitude, you really, a couple things you really have to ask yourself the question. And we've been very upfront about this, that the county's going to have to subsidize this project. Mm -hmm. There's no question about it. But when you look at the amount of the subsidy, and we're roughly a $56 million budget. Okay. The subsidy on this is roughly going to be around 1% or less than the total county budget. So you really have to ask yourself that question. If this happens and if it's not a successful project, how much does this really affect the county and the county services? And when you, when you put it in that perspective, and I tell people, you know, it's less than 1%, is that going to, are we going to have to lay off sheriff deputies right. and, you know, those and give up a lot of services? And the answer is really no. It's not like, and I hate to use Allen Park, but I do use right. that as a scenario because they built a movie studio that never got off the ground down there for them. And they had to lay off a substantial amount of, um, you know, firefighters mm -hmm. and those types of things. So when you really look at the, that risk versus reward, um, that's really you, mm -hmm. as you make mm -hmm. your decisions. And I think as you see today, a couple of additional announcements um, when we had we had a lot of meetings with uh, individuals said if you go on this project we go and what I mean by that is if you look at Water Street they're currently yeah. building an 86 room uh, hotel over there with um, another 86 along with a restaurant and plans if things go well for them we have another individual that just came in and bought the Michigan National Bank building right. Right. Uh, Mr. Reed who's been super successful over in Grand Rapids with a lot of his ventures that is going to be a boutique hotel they have a city uh, city boutique Tika City Flats, and they have another one. I'm not sure the particular name, but he also bought the Sperry's building. He's investing $22 million between those two projects. It's a nice round number. It's a lot of money, you know, and it was the old proverbial, nobody uh, wanted to be the first one to put their toe in the water. I mean, if you look back at a three-year mm -hmm. period, and I even think this area, with the amount of development and activity that's going on, it was a pretty bold move on behalf of the county um, to step forward. It, but with those other investments come, um, that's kind of where we received the, the, the taxing benefit on the backside, so to speak. 
So you, you took the gamble as a county, and because of that, it's brought, it's enticed other people to get involved, which creates a, a larger tax base. It's, we collect 5.6 non-homestead mills of anything that happens countywide as far as development. So if you look at just the taxing benefit that the county is going to receive from these other um, two hotel projects, if you want to say the mm -hmm. hotel projects are specific, you know, you're talking in the neighborhood of forty to $50,000 kind of stuff is our taxing piece. So when you start going if you have to put the first 10 million yeah. in and there's a hundred million in investment that follows it currently currently there's over 30 million just in private money that's attached to this project um, you get paid on the backside, so to speak. So when you start talking about all those other things, yeah, I understand people don't like the county's involvement. They don't like some of that, but but is the other investment that follows? That's but, okay. but it's what it's the if the uh, effect that you're seeing all over the country. The the uh, public private partnerships are working. Public-private partnerships, um, we're not the first one to no. do an example of this. We brought in some really good consultants uh, that do a lot of these projects, and that was one of the things that we didn't skimp on in the beginning was to hire the right people to assist us through this, to design, size, what's your niche, market, so on and so forth. Okay, so now we've whet the people's appetite. They, we've told them the story of the history, and we've brought them up to date about uh, the development that's going on and the, and the benefits that are going to happen. Talk to me now about where, which room are we in, and let's do a little tour. Well, uh, this is the uh, big, this is the big part of it here. Um, this is actually, if you look behind us, this is cut in a third right now. So this oh. this whole, if you look back over here, that actually is how they can split this room up. You pull that back. There's actually two more rooms per se the size this size behind it. This is a 20,000 square foot room. Uh, the one we're in is 20,000? Well, the total. If, total. You t if you pull the wall back, it's 20,000. It's got the tall ceilings, as you see. Um, this is really set up. This is the main exhibit hall. So you can do boat shows, RV shows, those types of things. And that's the reason for the, for the uh, ceiling height here. Okay, and you're on the, the front part of the, the east side of the building with just a, a spectacular view of the bridge and St. Clair River. Well, if you get, I, I really, you know, we take it for granted being in right. this area. When you look at the Blue Water Bridge here outside, you look at the freighters go by the water and anybody that's been here. And when even been, in the winter, seeing the ice flows. Even in the winter time. And when you bring in people in from other parts of the state, they actually see this. And, and to be quite honest, when we sat down with the developers originally, they had said, you know, if we were just talking about another convention center in the middle of a cornfield somewhere, we wouldn't be sitting here talking to you. And uh, it's just, it's just, there's been a lot of buzz about it. And if you, I think if you just look at the whole, um, just the whole renewed vibe in the area, to be quite honest, that this was really a big catalyst for that. You said a 20,000 square foot room uh, with high ceilings. How large of a convention or a, a boat show can, can you hold? Well, when you really look at attendees, that's what you talk about. You, you have your, for example, your your concert style seating, which they okay. can go up to 2,400. This is just the setup as a banquet now, as you can see behind us, uh, roughly 12 to 1400 somewhere in the banquet if you're actually doing the sit down with room to move that's if the whole room was open <coughs> our sweet spot for conventions though when we talked when we originally looked at it we're looking at the small and mid-market conventions essentially people that travel around <coughs> the state every year that have a, that are part of a group a state association or maybe a regional association go to Grand Rapids, mm -hmm. go to Mount Pleasant, go to Lansing, Detroit, do the circuit. Um, we also... But they've made that circuit hundreds of times, they made the so they're looking for something new. <laughs> they're looking for something new, and it, it, that's the exciting part of bringing SMG. We brought in a professional mm -hmm. management group, not only to manage the convention center, but they're actually managing uh, McMoran Arena also. SMG manages Cobo Hall. Mm. Uh, had a tremendous amount of success down there. They managed the DeVos Center mm. over in Grand Rapids, and they managed the Saginaw Dow Event Center. A pretty credible group. Well, it's kind of the plug and play. Generally, what you see is these three years, you have meeting planners, you know, mm -hmm. specific organizations hire meeting planners to plan their events. They have a lot of comfort um, with SMG, so you mm -hmm. want to get into that circuit and, right. be, and be part right. of it. And if you look at the whole, if you really take your old map of Michigan, you really don't have a lot on this side of the state. You know, Cobo Hall is a big venue, and a lot of times people just don't want the bigger venues. We really feel too this. It's too big. The city, you know, they're looking for a smaller 
mid-market type of market, and we feel very strongly that we're going to fit that. We've had a tremendous amount of response, uh, you know, so far with it. So, the lobby area that we were showing now um, is you, you just told me they have some breakout rooms along that that wall there. Well, talk to me about that. Uh, you got the the twenty thousand square foot uh, show exhibit area, but then what else? Well, when you actually enter the convention center from the convention center, uh, from the convention center, um, you know, exit and entrance from the outside, you actually walk into to, if you want to just call it like a mezzanine area yeah. or whatever. Um, that is actually the part that that you you're able to have pre-function. They call it a lot of pre-function okay. space, so people um, have uh, you know can can come in. They can have some drinks. They can have some appetizers. That kind of stuff. It's just a great space. You actually walk out onto the the deck outside, and mm -hmm. you you get a first-hand view of the of of the river and mm -hmm. and you know everything else going on with the bridge. And probably the biggest thing that people don't realize is the space on the other side of that was existing space that was actually in oh. the hotel so we have two uh, we have two other additional rooms on that side which are the breakout rooms if you've ever been to conferences uh -huh. you go to a conference they send you to smaller breakout rooms um, those particular rooms can be broken into two rooms uh, each so that gives us four breakout rooms then there's an existing space the 11,000 square foot ballroom that if anybody that's 11,000 square feet the, the existing space that we had purchased right. that was under the hotel is 11,000 square foot that can be broke up into five so we have the potential for nine different breakout rooms uh, that's yeah, wonderful. in this and that was a big part of it uh, we put bathrooms but a lot of it a lot of the space when you come in roughly two-fifths of the space was under the existing hotel structure the county actually bought portions of that totally mm -hmm. demolished it and redid it so if you drive by the place doesn't look mm -hmm. that big from the outside but when you actually walk through and you see all the additional space that it really encompasses it's uh, roughly 43,000 uh, square foot total uh, that doesn't include anything to do with the hotel has additional space when you come in you know there's a, there's a lot of space in the hotel so it's re we really feel that we're hitting our sweet spot with square footage our niche and, and I just know from the hotel occupancy now, the, the others that are looking to, to come. Uh, and uh, the whole area backs up to a freighter's restaurant, so if you have catering needs, they're all taken care of. Yeah, the back of the house, Freighters has a um, contract to actually cater for the uh, convention center. They build a, a much larger kitchen than they need for that purpose. Makes a lot of sense. You have the kitchen that can serve the restaurant and then they can also serve the uh, you know convention side and we're talking with Baker College with a lot of opportunities too with their kids uh, coming over because they have they've got over 100 students now in the culinary program been extremely successful they're building student housing right now to mm -hmm. house 50 plus students that's how that's how it, much sooner than they, what they even anticipated here and then the hotel I know is looking at an additional 60 plus rooms wow, um, there's another tower on the site yeah just because the size of the hotel to accommodate square footage we knew the rooms uh, roughly I think it's 146 149 there had always been talk that you need to be in that 200 room mm -hmm. um, segment so you're going to see more activity happen with expansion of rooms here uh, do they have some scheduled uh, conventions coming in already, or is that uh, still in the planning stages? Yeah, we've actually got some really big ones coming up. Um, but the thing that with this is going to be roughly a three-year ramp-up period. Okay. That's a, when we Which looked is understandable. At that, yeah. The know, other the other conventions have already made their commitments. Other co conventions make the commitment as you go through, you ramp up, you ramp up additional staffing in time till you get to that point. So the old proverbial crystal ball, mm -hmm. three to five years, will really be the t will be the tell-all. To, to, to say that uh, how successful the project was or wasn't. I was obviously a big advocate and a big proponent of it. I'm privy to a lot more information, obviously, the most. You try to share that information, mm -hmm. and here's the reasons why you make your decision to move forward. But I go back, if you turn the clock back four or five years ago, just in the whole area, uh, especially quoting quite on some Port Heron a lot, downtown Port Heron in this area is looking a whole lot different than it did four or five years ago right. for the better right really right and um, so hopefully some of the spin-off from this uh, I know 
St. Clair and issue has been well talked about. We've had many hoteliers in the market now looking at that. That is a big regional priority for the county to get that back in because it comes down to capacity issues. Mm -hmm. We're running roughly 58% right now. Um, state average is about 55. We know there's going to be roughly a 10% spike with this actual convention center. So it's going to put it up into the high 60s. That, that then dictates there's more rooms for more market in the, you know, in the Blue Water area. Well, it's exciting, and I, I know that you went through a lot of uh, a lot of stress, a lot of uh, uh, you as a, not as an individual, but but as a board, it, 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 you really had to have uh, some some patience. Yeah, when you make decisions, these aren't you know this is a nine million dollar project, and I can tell you where it's going to be on budget. Um, the Good. time people had always asked about the time there was. You know, when we were going through this, we weren't, we were making darn well sure before we broke ground on this thing. We had to dot the I's, cross the T's, brought the right people in, because that tends to be where you run into trouble sometimes with projects like this. You know, these aren't cookie cutter deals. You bring them in, you, you define your market, you look at your niche, you're looking at existing space. And really the cost on this is nine million, if the existing space did not exist, this is a 12 to 14 million dollar type of project. So by being able to buy some of the existing space in the hotel and, convert it. and converting that, which we picked up a lot of additional square footage there, um, it's 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 good. The you know that price point is um, you know much better than it would have been building from uh, scratch. You said there's an open house for the public, and it's on a Saturday, I believe. Saturday, April 18th. I don't have the specific time. It's going to like a 10 to 2 somewhere yeah. in there is what they're talking about. I encourage everybody to come on out and take a look. We're going to be here to bring people through, uh, uh, take uh, tours of it. And uh, yeah, you know, when we first started this and they had the hotel all tore up and, oh, yeah. and it was. Hotel you know, was closed. Hotel was closed. They had it got it. We were bringing people through. It was really hard to, you know, sometimes get your visualize get, it. Visualize it. And I, I can really tell you, coming through this today, looking at it, uh, as good as I would hope, better than expected, I guess. You know, you don't, you know, you make these leaps of faith in politics. You have a pretty good idea. But if you come in and you really look at the finishes and some of the other amenities that it really has to offer, it's, it's, gonna, it's a great project. Jeff Bowen, we thank you very much for your time today and, and for this uh, special tour. And we salute you and the County Board of uh, Commissioners for all, for all your efforts. I appreciate you coming out today, Paul, and getting a chance to share this with the public. Once again, we encourage April 18th. And even if you cannot make it, even if the public can't make it, the facility's always open. You know, you can come into the hotel up here. You can walk down the hallway. Peek your head in here and look okay. around. We encourage that. Beautiful. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. That's about it for this special edition of the Roundtable. Thanks for watching.